February began in the worst way possible for humanity as earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria. What is described as the fifth deadliest earthquake since 2002 took away almost 40,000 lives and left almost 80,000 people injured. The devastating earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 left more than 5,700 buildings collapsed. Thousands of miles away from Hatay, where the earthquake rocked residents hardest, the news was just permeating the borders of Ghana that Christian Achu had been trapped under the rubble. Abdu Hayate, who is the president of Cheetah FC, a club Achu played with, recounts how the news broke to him. So if you ask me, it had been a very difficult 12 days. It was devastating to receive the news from the agent that Christian have passed. The moment he actually told me, my heart stopped beating for one second. I wept, I cried. Uh, I remember when I was going to training, and I couldn't go, I started feeling sick. I was shivering. I had burning sensation in my head. Ah, calls keep coming. From yesterday to today, honestly, I don't know how to describe myself. The next moment I'm okay, the next moment it gets to me. I've witnessed so many deaths, but I don't know why Christian Achutra, some deaths have actually hit me very, very, very hard. In their 14-year history, Cheetah had hit their lowest point. Their bedrock and most attractive export was no more. When Achu was playing for the club on the rocky Kaswa Zion pitch, most of the current players were toddlers, only dreaming of going pro one day. It wasn't just Yate who was hit by the death of Achu. These players, who occasionally received gifts and counselling from Achu, also shared the same sentiment. First, the first day I had that, I felt very sad because him being a good person, he's done so much for the country Ghana on the field and off the field as well. So hearing that news, but I felt bad, I felt bad, yeah. I was at the camp, at the clubhouse, and I heard that our legend, uh, Kisan Achu, has passed away. I felt very bad because I know him to be a very good man, um, he has a good heart, as, as you know, he always helping others, bringing people out of the prison, he has built um, orphanage, taking care of people, He's, he has done so many for us, so I felt very bad. Um, well, it's, it's really um, hard for some of us to accept what is happening, um, because he has he has been a player of this club before and then he has been our big motivation, a big player out there. So when we heard the news, um, we didn't want to believe it at the first place because um, we imagined losing him was a, a big blow to us at the first place. And then um, as time goes on, the research and everything, then finally the case came out that he was, um, we lost him. Achu, at a young age, was diminutive and didn't come across as a footballer that scouts will be attracted to just because of his stature. But that wasn't the case for Safiu Bako, who is the coach of Cheetah. The moment he set his eyes on Achu, he knew the boy will become a star. The time my boss brought Achu from Firenote, now it's under somebody. Somebody pick him, win him, before he came to me. Immediately, my boss brought at you. Now we are playing a tournament against Goofies in Obuasi. Immediately, my boss brought at you. I said, Boss, this boy can play. He said, ah, Why? I said, I see the way they work. Because I'm a footballer before. So when I see footballer, and I'm a coach, we didn't train with our two bets. Immediately, we put him in his college. He didn't train with them. The way he played that day, White man say we like this boy. Christian's senior brother came to see me, Isaac, and then Isaac said to me that uh, Christian have told him 
about an invitation that have come from Sporting Lisbon through me to Feyenoord. But Feyenoord are feeling reluctant to let him go. He wants to know whether that is true because that is what uh, somebody who works in Feyenoord actually told him. And I said, yes, it is true, Sporting Lisbon. I've actually invited Christian, but I can't do anything. Feyenoord don't want to let him go. So they told me that they will speak to the management of Feyenoord to let the boy go. Uh, they later came to me to say, yes, the Feyenoord don't want to let the boy go, but the boy want to go. Um, I think Christian left the camp of Feyenoord. And then, uh, let me say, you know, after one and a half years going back and front with Feyenoord, um, Mr. The late um, coach um, Ade actually then gave me a call to say that uh, I should bring money and then come and take Christian. After the long saga, Achu officially joined Cheetah in October 2009. His hard work and determination saw him earn a move to Europe in just three months. The $5,000 Mr. Chami gave us to loan Christian from Cheetah to Precum Chelsea, went to Cantamanto, bought some clothes and bag for Christian to go to FC Porto on trials. That night, after checking in, when Christian bought the flight, I was just waiting for him to tell me that he bought the flight for me to leave the airport. When he boarded the flight, he sent me a text message. First, no, first he called me to say that he boarded the flight. So I decided to leave the airport to Kaswa. He sent me a text message. He said, Mr. Yate, thank you very much for everything that you have done for me. I really appreciate you. I had faith that you could help me. And that is what I told my brother. Today, as I fly to FC Porto for trials, I want to say to you that I will not return. Please don't spend the remaining 3,500. Go give this 3,500 back to Mr. Chairman because I will not return. I will succeed on my trials. I will play football to the highest level. I will make you proud. I will make myself proud. The world will hear of Christian Achu Chasam. Achu successfully passed his trials at FC Porto and as a teenager would receive his first call up to the senior team on May 14, 2011 against Maritimo in the Portuguese top flight. Atsu. He was later loaned out to fellow Portuguese side Rio Ave for the 2011-2012 season. The winger returned to Porto the following campaign, starting nine league games as they won the league for a third successive time. His emergence in Europe attracted eyeballs, including then Black Stars coach Kwesi Apia. Yeah, in actual fact, a friend of mine in London, you know, he prompted me that there's a player in Portugal, so if I can have a look at him. And um, what I normally do is um, when the player is recommended, I try to follow the player for about four to five matches. And just to assess and confirm that he can be part of the national team. So, through the assessment, I invited him. But what I told him was, look, I've invited you because I've seen how you play, but you need to convince Kenyans that you deserve to be in the national team. And um, that's actually what I tell every new player who's coming to the national team. So, um, when he also had the opportunity, um, I believe very well that he proved to all Ghanaians that he deserved to be in the team.
Achu replaced the more familiar face in Suleiman Tari before the 60th minute mark and scored his debut goal whilst playing a huge role in the seventh goal of the game, floating the corner that led to the goal in the game against Lesotho. Anytime Achu touched the ball, the 30,000 fans in the stadium anticipated something marvelous. He went past the Lesotho defenders with ease and it was as if the ball was glued to his mysteriously pink boots. A new star was truly born. Almost three years later and the script had changed just a bit. Due to subsequent injuries, Achu had been out of action for almost half the year preceding the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations. Eyebrows were raised when the then Everton winger was included in the squad, but in the midst of adversity, Achu had a tournament to remember. When he was going to the AFCON, the AFCON that he actually won the best player and the best goal. Honestly, for me, I didn't want a Christian to go um, to the AFCON because he was not performing very well with his club, Everton. And uh, I was like, you don't need to go and disgrace yourself at the AFCON. He told me, look at the train. When I went to Porto Junior side, I was the best player. When I went to Real Ave, the youth side, I was the best player. When I went to Vitens, they had very good wingers. I came out to be the best player. I'm going to AFCON and I'll be the best player. I just need you to pray for me and then be around me. And truly, I traveled all the way to Spain. Uh, the Black Star was actually camped in Spain uh, to be with him for some two days. And then truly, he came out as the best player for the tournament with the best goal as well. As Achu continued to grow from strength to strength, he never forgot his roots and always held on to religion, which was very dear to his heart at a young age. He was a Christian, very devoted to his religion, his Bible. The, there is a church just behind us. Uh, he always wanted to pull his fellow players to the church. I remember when Christian went to Porto and succeed in the trials. Um, Porto were to pay him 800 euros um, a month. Um, I was there when Christian actually sent me at Western Union and I received 800 euros. And when I received 800 euros from Western Union, I was so happy. I was thinking Christian have sent me money. Um, his court followed up and he said, the 800 euros that he sent, the equivalent of the 800 euros is going to be this in CD and he wants me to take the money and give the money to the church. Anything will do. I think we'll go. God first. You know, when we are going to play a match on Sunday, we go to church, after church, we come, we dress, we come like this. And I, I do like Mambi. Either you were, you grew past him, or you are a younger, I do like you. And when he eats, and his colleagues are not eating, I do will feel bad. Um, Christian want to help everybody because of he having in mind that uh, he came from a, a very poor background. From a young age, Achu has always been a cheerful giver. His lifelong passion has been to help provide a quality life for wayward children on the street. As a result, the former Chelsea player grew attached to the Becky's orphanage home in Senyat Breku where he constantly provided them with supplies. The director of the orphanage home, Seth Esiedu, shares the special bond they had with Achu. Achu is an ambassador of um, Arms Around a Child, and Becky's foundation happens to be a beneficiary um, of Arms Around a Child. So when he visited, he visited us actually in 2016, with a team from UK, that is Arms Around the Child, to our facility. So when he came here, um, he got so close or attached to the children and to the home. 
So he decided that he is going to adapt this home as his own and make sure that he raised these children in terms of all the necessary support to see them grow up to be the best that he thinks um, he can offer them. My last conversation with him was the Friday and Saturday prior to his death. Um, we had a chat on Friday where he asked me of the project, uh, progress of work. He is actually building a new school for the children here and it's going to be a project that will be open up to the whole community to also benefit. So he asked me of progress of work which I gave him on phone and then he further requested of uh, videos and pictures. And so the next day, that was on Saturday, I did those videos and then the pictures for him. And then he wrote back that we have done a good job and he wanted to send us all the funds that would be needed to complete the project. And then we should try and um, do all the necessary arrangements so that he will come down in June to officially commission the school project. And then just the Monday, the disaster happened. The 60 children in the orphanage home loved Christina Chu. He used to take them out on excursions and ensure that they always had a smile on their faces. The manager of the orphanage home, Monica Redua, talks about how difficult the loss has been. So on hearing on, about the news on his death, it wasn't easy conveying it to the children. But we tried, in fact I tried. And that day, <laughs> it was like we doing the funeral in the home. Achu's philanthropy goes beyond just children. He's also been passionately involved in prison work, trying to make the lives of ex-convicts better. The former footballer was a strong advocate for the passage of the non-custodial sentencing bill into law. CEO of Crime Check Foundation, Mr. Ibrahim Opong Kwating, narrates how Achu reached out to them and wanted to partner to help save the lives of prisoners. He reached out to us about five years ago. As you came in, I played something on my laptop for you to listen. That he said he reached out to us on Facebook, and through that uh, we eventually met. And uh, he expressed uh, happiness about what we have been doing, especially our prison visitations, our ability to bring to the fore um, uh, some of the flagrant violations of the human rights of prisoners and uh, other vulnerable groups in society, many who could not uh, take, uh, hire the services of lawyers and had to be thrown into jail. He was particularly concerned about petty offenders being thrown into jail. Someone goes to steal a file, someone goes to steal uh, a crate of egg, and the person is unable to pay their fine in court. And so such a person has to be imprisoned and then uh, government has to use our taxpayers' money to feed uh, them. He thought that was uh, unreasonable. So under our ex-convict reintegration project, he reintegrated most of these people into society by giving them trading capital. One of the beneficiaries of the ex-convict reintegration project supported by Achu is Mark Mensa. Christian, Achu's passing made me cry. I was very sad because Achu is the reason why I am in Accra. Achu is the reason why I have a place to stay. If you're prison, I'm going to buy it. Or you're good. Or you're good. Or you're good. He was a peaceful person. He cared so much for the poor and needy. I never thought someone like him would help me. He was a good person. My mom is still crying after she heard the news. I can't believe it. Achu was one of ten siblings and grew up in extreme poverty. However, he's gone on to defy the odds and touch the lives of many. Um, I remember there is one 
football administrator whose wife was very sick. Um, the administrator came to see me to connect him to Christian. I gave him Christian number to contact Christian himself, but not to tell him that I gave the number to him. He came back to tell me that Christian had given him some huge amount of money to take care of his wife. He said, ah, coach, what kind of motor are you using? That time I'm using that Chinese motor, Shaminobu. He said, no, and that Shaminobu is milk by give me. That is my chairman, junior brother. I said, no, coach, you have to get a new motor. Then he tell me when you close the train, uh, the match, she collect his number, come to the house. Go to the house, he said, coach, get where am I new motor? Didn't get the chance to speak with him one on one, but got the chance to meet him as a team. Uh, he gave us some advice, but gave us some gifts. Yeah. He said there's a lot of money in football, but not for the lazy ones. So if you want to get to the top, you need to fight, work very hard to get there, because it's not easy. Um, life without him now is very, very serious and uh, troublesome, worrisome, because a pillar of support is gone and. We rely solely on him, although there are other people who come in to support, but his is extraordinary and we feel proud of him. So losing someone like that is a big blow to us. A number of Ghanaian players have paid their last respect for the former AFCON player of the tournament. Institutions like the Premier League have also honored the player by allowing clubs to have a minute of applause before games. The great poet Maya Angelou once wrote, your legacy is every life you've touched. Every person whose life was either moved or not is every person you've harmed or helped. That's your legacy. You had a job to do on earth. You've done the job that the Almighty wanted you to do. You've accomplished your job. Atsu now trying to accelerate play. Christian Atsu. Oh, it's in, it's six. The substitute scores, Christian Atsu. Achi's legacy won't be defined by the way he left defenders for good or the important goals he scored. Achu will be remembered for his transformational leadership, sacrifice and kindness. Achu was all this and many more. Achu was a human who discovered his golden celestial self, making him an angel of our time. God be with you till we meet again By his counsels guide upon you With his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again God be with you till we meet again Wings securely hide you, daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Yeah.